it's us the bed some chips and dip don't judge us because we are rock and roll and rock she's roll rock and roll sun is shining heading to breakfast in brooklyn So we made it across Brooklyn Bridge and we are in a lovely little place, a little bistro thing called Teresa's. She's making me very good, so I'll let you know. So Teresa's done, whole bill only came to like 20 odd dollars. Food was fantastic. If you want to eat somewhere cheaper outside of East Village, Brooklyn is your place. We've been spending 60 to 70 dollars per meal in East Village here, 25 and very, very good food. Lots of good reasons to be in the East Village for the food, the coffee, the quirky little dessert places, the whole general vibe. But one of the main things we wanted to come and see over here is a specialist jewelry store called Vera Meat, which is designed by a, a well-known model, which is some really quirky stuff. The main one being a French bulldog ring that I need. Cool car. Is the store super yeah. cool? My Check out how cool the staff are. <laughs> Because we're chatty, we got talking to the managers and one of the owners who's here. And as a result, yeah. as I said, whenever we go anywhere, we get a little bit cheeky to ask for you guys, can we do something? And they have put on, not 10, not 20, not even 30, 50% discount code for you guys. You'll be in the link on the screen and in the description. It will only be valid for two weeks though. If that expert stands, we'll let you know. But other than that, enjoy it. Very, very, very cool. We're done and we're going to leave with a raise the roof. Yeah. Raise the roof. We're bringing it back! We're bringing it back! It's been a pleasure. Coolest shop groupies ever. Bye. See you later. Bye bye bye. 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 Apparently, we have dogs that can open doors because it wasn't chat. It's cold outside. So I've been doing high volume training since I got back. What I tend to do whenever I've been away, rather than come back and start going heavy, especially if you're like me, you have small joints that have um, the tendency to be affected by a sudden onslaught of heavy weights or things like that. They don't do well with them. If you're someone who has to manage those kind of things, then the best way to come back is to come back and create an overload through volume rather than through weight. Get your body back into the process of going through the movements, connect the mind to the muscle, get the body set back in a routine, and then introduce the heavy weight back in. It's gonna massively reduce the risk of injuries, the risk of aggravation on joints, and especially if you've been traveling and been sat in static positions, not been training like you normally would. This is a very, very clever way to come back in, create that overload, create that want, that drive, that enjoyment again, but without risking popping something or tweaking something. I'm not saying you're gonna come back and get massively injured, but what can happen is you can get aggravated little annoyances, fuckety little things that can set you back and this helps avoid it. I've been back in for two days doing the high volume work. I didn't show you that because basically I was being selfish. I wanted to get myself back into my routines. I wanted to just get in there, get my head down and drive through, get that kind of determination back, get that heart and soul back into my training because for me when I take time off, it doesn't send me back with like a renewed energy to want to get back in the gym. If anything, it makes me not want to go. This is why I rarely ever take lots of time off the gym. It's because something I'd like to have in my routine is something that when I do more of it, I get better at it. So taking time off for me is a negative. So to get back in, I, I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to film because I wanted to be selfish. Um, I wanted to 
getting my head down and having to reset cameras and do things like that to make it interesting for you guys to watch um, would have slowed my rhythm. Because when I train with high volume, I also train with high intensity, I also train with very low rest times. I like to have my music on, my head down and focus on nothing else. I don't like my focus to be broken. I don't like to talk to people in between it with my music's on. I happily talk before and after, but sometimes I just need to get my head down, zone out and tunnel vision. And that really helps me get back into the rhythm. It's one of those things guys, if you've been off and you're going back into the gym, put the fucking phone away, put it on airplane mode if you're using it as music. Just listen to the music, zone into just you, your goal, and the progress that you want to get back into. And the less distractions you can create, the better you will be at getting back to what you love doing. So with that said, I had a few days in, feeling very good, very, very, very sore. Espresso time, gym time. Let's go see what the squats are about. Chin chin. Woo, espresso down. Man down are on. Nosy pug. So here we are, we're in a nice quiet gym, squat rack is ours. Gonna go through the warm-ups I've done before. If you haven't seen those, check the other quad videos. Cycling shorts underneath, as always. Keep the warmth in your joint, get a little bit of support. Knee sleeves are gonna go on, squat shoes are gonna go on. Let's fucking do this. As always, invest in yourself. Got my roller in my gym bag, sleeves, Bluetooth Sony headphones. I've done a video on them if you haven't seen them, check that out. Most importantly, but these have been the biggest influence on my squat other than focusing on my technique. These have allowed me to take the technique that I was told about and utilize it properly by working with how my body moves. I don't have good dorsal flexion. These allow me to have good dorsal flexion, which allows me to do a proper movement. If I hadn't invested in those shoes, I would still have the same problems and I would not be improving on my squats. Invest in you. Yes, we are back. We are back in the UK. We are back in the gym. Finally, it feels good. Like I said to you guys, time off for me sucks. It doesn't help. So coming back, like I was saying, come back high volume rather than heavy, mainly just to protect the body and the joints, but also because I freaking love high volume training. Love it, love it, love it. So coming back, it just gets my head right, it gets my heart right, and it gets me back into the enjoyment of training right off the get-go. If I had to come back just trying to go heavy, it would have sucked. But what I did do was coming on, this was meant to be a rest day, just to practice the squat. So here you've seen me do the dorsal flexion you've seen me do before. Rolling out is still going on, and I had done a high volume leg session previously previously this week and I did the seated extensions, I did leg press and I did 15 five, 5 rep work on these. If you don't know these guys, it's where I do 15 reps, I take a rest pause for 3 seconds, do 5 more reps, rest pause for 3 seconds, 5 more reps and that's one set and I do 5 of those. So again, not being stupid here, you can see me with 80 kilograms on my first set on the bar. One thing I want you to notice here is progression points are not always just about weight. Look at this. To you, this means nothing, but to me, me being able to rep one rep after the other here is a big deal. I wasn't able to do this because of my glute injury and because of that destabilization on my right side. This shows progression to me. This shows that my technique is improving, my confidence is improving, and my control is improving. So I want to just discuss this with you guys a little bit is the fact that it's, progression is not all about weight. Progression is about getting better, whether that means an extra rep, better reps, more stable reps, more control better technique these are all points of progression do not be disheartened if you can't get past a certain weight but if the reps at that weight are getting better and better over time that is perfectly perfectly acceptable as progression and you should be proud of that progression so don't get so tunnel vision that you're only looking at one thing remember there are many many aspects to everything that you are doing so after two sets of 80 kilograms, I jumped straight to 100 kilograms. Now this wouldn't have happened before during the rehab, but because I knew I'd done this some max weight before and I felt good and comfortable, I stepped straight up from 80 to 100. Second set of 100, it felt good. Gonna do five again. Sam is gonna be cameraman for the first time in his life. Everybody say hello to Ka Cam? Sa Cam? Sam Cam. We're going to Sam Cam. So very, very important, whenever you're rehabbing or relearning or doing something new is to not get ahead of yourself. I did 100 kilograms, which was my previous max weight like three weeks ago, and it felt good. I could have easily jumped up, but what I did was did a secondary set on the 100, made sure that my technique was down, made sure that my stamina was still there, because often you can get one good set, easy five, and then the second set drops you to three because your technique goes, and stubbornness will push through to five using bad technique. What you have to achieve is good technique regardless. So doing a secondary set on 100 of the five, and knowing that I had more left in the tank, let me know that I could up the weight a little bit. So moving up, so we got 20, 10, 10, five. So that's 45 on each side, which makes 90 in total. Then with the bar, that's 110 kilos. So this is the max that you saw me do on before we went away. So I'm very fucking happy 
very happy I'm able to at least attempt this today after travel because the traveling things can affect you because the main thing here is I'm not being stupid I'm not overly pushing myself like in terms of drive through regardless I'm still looking at technique I'm still looking at the focus and there's a big difference between a weight feeling heavy and you not being able to move the weight correctly so keep that in mind back on sand cam 110 kilos let's see how this moves what I'm looking for here is a nice clean rep down and for it to feel solid on the way up. If there's any point where I showed you in the last video where that little hip kick, I'm looking to avoid anything like that. Those tiny little movements that are out of sync are what you should be, the things you should be really focusing on. If they happen, you do not increase the weight. You stay where you are and you improve. And hopefully I've not gone back. But there's no Van Damme dance today because it's the same weight. You only get Van Damme dance on new PRs. The reason I'm happy being able to get back to the 110 that I did before I was away was because I am rehabbing through this. So I'm utilizing muscles that haven't been used for a while properly and they're having to be retrained to be connected to create that motor pathway and to create that mind to muscle connection. Time off can set you back. So if it, do, it does set you back, don't worry, it's completely normal. But I was under the bar, I came up sensibly, I increased the weight slowly and here you can see I'm taking my time between reps and I'm really driving and focusing on the technique. There was zero hip kick, I felt good under the bar, I was resetting when I needed to, so much so that that long pause that you saw me take then was because I was asking Sam how many reps I'd done because I was concentrating so hard on technique I wasn't counting. It's not a lot, but a lot of little things over time create one big result. I thought fuck it, we got Sam, be my cheerleader, and uh, we're doing it, we're putting 5 kilos on, so this will be 115, 115, Van Damme dance coming up. I can do it. Not, not the best of tunes to be used. <laughs> <laughs> just a kind of like a shitty disc. I, I get you. <laughs> Clips. No matter what weight you've got in there, put a clip on. But if it even slides an inch, you change the central point of the bar. And it's those little things that can cause fuckety injuries. Due to the things that I've bought, due to the equipment I've kept with me, due to the time and effort I've put into doing all the rehab work, to doing the warm-ups, to concentrating on my technique, to focusing, to putting in extra sessions of just this squat movement, I was able to hit the new PR even though I'd already done seven or eight sets prior to this, not including warm-ups that you didn't see. And it felt good. I felt strong. I felt confident. And this is what I mean, guys. Invest in yourselves. Concentrate on yourselves. Don't worry about others. You know what your strengths are, but work on your weaknesses. Make them a strength. Everybody is good at working at what they're good at doing. But those that can improve at what they're bad at, they become the best. <laughs> Homemade soup, protein bread, and the missus. <laughs> oh, damn it. She got me hooked. And now that I love you, no matter what happens up there. We'll be ashamed of you, Dad. You're watching a female program eating the soup. You're ashamed of me? Well, it depends now. Would you be bribing me with some of them there? Biscuits. I don't care what you do. I am French. I am indifferent. Excuse me. Pardon moi. Would you uh, scratch my bum? I am back and I'm even better. Wow! Nothing can break up this bond. We're in a practice inside time. This is what you've trained your dog to do. Some people train their dogs to guard them to bring them things, you, you've trained your dog to stick its head in a coffee table for bum scratches.